Hello, folks, and welcome back to Glory Hunter. Thank you so much for your support of the series so far. And today, well, I've signed a French international, and we play Aston Villa and Wolves, two teams that we have to be better than. folks how are you doing good to see you again again thank you for the likes you're leaving on the videos it's great to see so many people enjoying the return of glory hunter and as i mentioned we've signed a french international thomas lamar joins us from atletico madrid for a quite a small fee with quite a big wage and of course we'll talk about why we've signed him in just a moment but first let's catch up on what we've done since we last met so i mentioned we were going to play a host of league games and we did we kicked things off with a 1-1 draw against brentford not ideal especially against brentford but our away point always worth having just after that it was a 2-0 defeat to liverpool they're they're just quite good on football manager so no harm done but they played Leicester. That was a 4-1 win. And uh, yeah, a nice goal from Isaac to round things off for us in that. And Joe Willock was the match winner against Bournemouth as we beat them 2-1 as well. 0-0 against Crystal Palace. <sighs> Just a bit disappointing for a home game. But that then, as you can see, leaves us with Aston Villa and Wolves. And obviously, we've got the World Cup in the middle of all of this. So if we can get ourselves in a decent position by then, that would be great. October's not great. So these two games are absolutely crucial if we're going to have any sort of success, I think, potentially this season. A top half finish is an absolute minimum, and then looking at those European places would be ideal. Right now, we are bedded into the midfield mire above Arsenal, which would have taken, but behind Bournemouth, Wolves, West Ham, and Villa. So two of the sides we're looking to be above, we're currently below, and that's where it leads us into today. But let's talk Thomas Lamar, shall we? Yeah, come on. So one of the issues I've had at Newcastle is removing some of the deadwood but all also needing to evolve the squad jacob murphy isn't thomas lamar he's just not quite as good as thomas lamar i just i deem thomas lamar to be a slightly better version of jacob murphy in some areas a much better version especially at set pieces which could be important but physically very very similar mentally again lamar's got the edge and technically the same situation so bringing in a player like thomas lamar for the fee that we've got him on Makes a lot of sense to me. It's going to take a few weeks to get up to speed and get up to match fitness, but you can see great versatility for him. Can play basically everywhere that we'd ever need him to. Central midfield, out on the left-hand side. Gives us a few more options. Him and St. Maximin, the French connection out on that side. So lovely stuff. Welcome him to the team, folks. And uh, let's run you through the team then for today's first game against, remind me, that's right, Aston Villa. I said it 15 times and then still forgot, so... Is that why you forget to win games? Or... Back again, are we? <laughs> Just noticed we're not aligned with the lights properly. You know, what are we doing here? So we've changed a few things up in the last few games. As you can see, this isn't quite what you'd have expected. Bruno Gamares got himself an injury and he's been out for a little while and I'm hoping to return to fitness, hopefully a little bit of game time today. But it's meant that McAllister, which is a player I'm really pleased we signed, sits in that deeper role for now. We know how combative he is. We know how creative he is. He's arguably better than Gamares in that role. Uh, Willock then has come into the midfield and as you saw from a recent game, scored a goal, which is always lovely to see. So Maximin out on that right-hand side using the width as possible and then Danjuma on the left it just seems to be a slightly better fit I think the dribbling ability of the maximum makes him a problem on either side but um yeah having him and Danjuma is is going so so far so good both got a couple of goals Isaac's the one though we need to get more more production for him and more goals out of him you can see from his recent form it's been slightly better sevens in every single game recently so we need a little bit more of that hopefully today then is a game where he can do that the bench is looking strong as well uh Charles played a couple of games here or there which has given us a nice balance at the back but ultimately Dan Burn and Botman is still the combination I'm looking to play which way around these two should go considering they both want to play on the left though I don't know. And of course, hoping to see maybe the likes of Almiron and Thomas Lamar at some point today, as well as maybe Callum Wilson. So let's get into this first game then and see if we can get a result away at Villa Park. All right, there is the Villa side then, managed by Unai Emery, um, who actually wasn't at Villa at the start of the season. I can't remember who was. No, I can't remember. All right, then they're playing a 4-4-2 system. Coutinho on the left-hand side, Bailey on the right. Two very different types of players. One more creative, of course, one more of a speedster. So we're going to have to be at our best to control both. 
And there's our team then. Looking for Joe Willick to support that front three and hopefully get himself on the score sheet again. That'd be lovely. Villa currently sit on 13 points. A good start to the season for them. Whereas we're on six games. It, the level goal difference, eight points. Very, very me. I will say, uh, no jobs have come up yet. So no voting to be done. So but keep keep your wits about you. You never know when you might be called into action. As uh, Speaking of action, there's Dan Juma. I'm on that right-hand side. Left-hand side, sorry. Cuts inside. Can he let it back to Isaac? Goes alone. Willock's there with possibly the worst shot I've ever seen. So, good. What's he done there? Why is he not Why is he not just laced it into the back of the net? It's a brilliant run from Dan Juma, and now they've got a free kick inside the danger zone. I've got a theory that if the ball is that side of the edge of the D, it always goes in. So, um, oh, God. So, yeah, maybe that is a thing. Luca Dean with it then. Left-footed finish. Nick Pope can't get there. And uh, it's Aston Villa 1, Newcastle 0. If it's outside that zone, it doesn't go in. So don't foul them in the zone. That's what we've learned a lesson, haven't we? See, the Trippi is not going to score from there. I've called it. Dan Byrne. Oh, my God. What a wonderful header. I love that Trippier exclusively looks for Dan Byrne at set pieces and nobody else. Ball's played right over to that side as Ollie Watkins gets there. And uh, we're defending it haphazardly. McAllister wins the ball. No, sorry. He doesn't win the ball. Oh, I've killed that. Why would he? Why would he? Why would he? I actually think he may do. So we'll see if the officials give this. They're going to look at this penalty. Villa wants it. And uh, What? Coutinho for Villa then. And he is inside the zone. So... Nick Pope, do me a favour. I mean, Nick, Nick, Nick. I feel like Nick Pope dived so far onto one side there that he was nearly sitting in row A. Like, what, what's happened? What a free kick and a penalty. It's good to be back. I love, I love to be, great being back. <sighs> okay, well, positive, clearly the wrong attitude to, to have away from home and maybe we need to be a little smarter in the home games, in the away games. We started off brilliantly. Joe Willock didn't score the goal. And now we're 2-0 down and chasing, which I don't really like doing. I'm a manager that likes to be in front and manage from that, that, the front. Um, their 4-4-2 so far, I wouldn't even say it's been overly effective. They've just scored two set pieces. Also great to see uh, Alexis McAllister with that great defensive quality that I was looking for. Ah. All right, we need more possession in the second half. And I've said that, but that's all well and good. We need to try and, you know, make that actually a thing. So let's slow things down a little bit. Try to be a little bit more creative. Don't pass into space and try and get these wingers into play. I do feel like Maximin and Danjima, that's where things are. Oh, just, just call him Maximin there. Sent Maximin, okay? He's a, he's a man of the church. All right, well, at least at least score a goal, maybe. I'd love to see, I'd love to do a goal. We didn't do a goal against Tottenham last episode. We haven't done a goal so far in this episode. And Aston Villa on the ball and working it quite nicely once again. And now they're in and Ollie Watkins and the front two for Newcastle causing problems. And it's making me think the Callum Wilson, Alexander Isaac combination. Uh, when, when Dan Juma picks it up again. He's looked like our most creative and most exciting player so far in today's game as McAllister into the feet of Isaac and lovely, lovely turn from him and a great ball out to Maximin. This is where him being on that right side might hopefully come into play. Back to Trippier, who might unleash on goal. Back to Maximin, it's bobbled out to him. A little bit of time, a little bit of space, puts the cross in. Maybe he shouldn't be out on the right-hand side. I mean, I'm second-guessing everything. They're breaking forward. I thought this was our chance. Bottom steps in. Joel Linton back to that target. And here we go, then. Can we build again from the back? We've slowed things down. We're looking for more of the ball. A little bit more possession. McAllister can hopefully dictate things. And now Joe Willock into the feet of Isaac. Out to Danjuma. And now the overlap comes in. And that patient play is allowing the fullbacks to drive forward. <sighs> it's going to be a long... It's going to be a long series. It's going to be a long series. Corner. Where's Dan Byrne? Find him. Kieran Trippier on it then. This is where we've got to come. Good. Ball plays in. Never mind. Dan Byrne doesn't know how to head. Okay, get Dan Byrne off. Dan Juma. Never mind. Here we go. This could be the moment. Joel Linton from distance. Never mind. Never mind. 55 minutes gone. Time for some changes. Dan Byrne having a shocking game. Shah's coming on for him straight away. And up front, seeing very little from Isaac. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be on Callum Wilson. And Thomas Lamar, start warming up, mate. I've got two games today. We're doing two. And this, this is the first. A goal now, though, you know, with about 25 to go, that's when we can maybe start to turn the, turn the screw, he says, 2-0 down. Well, don't use that phrase, Ben. So Maximin, though, on that right-hand side. Can he get a ball inside? He can. And there's Joe Willock. Great ball to Wilson. Sounded like something else. <laughs> I felt like Tom Hanks there, to be honest. That felt good. 2-0 <laughs> down, though, so sharp it up. Uh, 15 to go. We're going to get... I mean, Willock's been pretty good from deep. So options off the bench are quite tricky. McAllister's in danger of being booked. So Gamares comes on for him in that deeper role because we want to get the fitness into him, really. And then Thomas Lamar, I think for Willock's probably fine. And um, 
we'll just see. Obviously, left footed Thomas Lamar, we've put him on the right hand side. It shouldn't, it shouldn't matter, should it? I know it's Kieran Trippier has nearly died, so I probably should have brought him off. As the time then ticks away, I didn't shout at them enough. It's a final highlight with 20 seconds to go. We've been done by set pieces. So I, I, I don't know how annoyed I can be at the performance. I guess we'll look at that in just a minute as Sir Max has been racing forward again, could have played a pass. And that if that doesn't sum up the game, I don't know what does. It remains 2-0. It remains and my shoulder, my shoulders told the story. Watch my shoulders; they'll tell the story. Ready? Yeah, that's right. Story of my life with, with my shoulders telling the story. I don't. Know, maybe at that point we maybe should have taken off the defensive player and uh, and brought on two strikers. I don't know. The, the, the problem we've got is this tactic is doing the classic thing of looking good sometimes and completely ineffective at others. So should we do a poll? Should we sack me now? Get rid of you, lot in. That might work. Or potentially one of me. Not you. <laughs> You're not in the running. I tell you what, if you get 10,000 likes, I'll let him take over for the next episode. 10,000. I mean, easily done, surely. Easily done. You're not Zealand Shannon, are you? Shut it. Oh, Dennis has got in there. Our defence is abysmal. Sort it out, Ben Carr. Full named me. What is he, a teacher? Jesus. I think we're going to make some bold decisions for the next game. And I'm feeling, I'm feel, and how many matches in are we? Seven. Oh, Callum Wilson's out for three to four weeks. You know that idea I just had? Yeah, that's gone. So don't worry about it. Doesn't matter. Don't want to play two strikers anyway. Never wanted to. So not playing Chris Wood. So <laughs> we are going to be bold though. Couple of changes are happening. Shah's going to come in at centre back, and then Gamares is going to come back in as I move McAllister forward into the role that he was born to play. Viewers, yeah, that's that's right. Um, the front three. I don't think was terrible. We were far better when we had a little bit more of the ball. I mean, the ball players we've got in central midfield, I think we should focus that a little more. Whip those crosses in towards Isaac. Play slightly slower, but don't be afraid to play more direct again, especially with the wingers that we've got. Get it out to them quickly. Focus the play down those sides. Because outside of the goals that Villa scored, I actually thought the general play that we saw was, was ours. So let's try and build on that now against Wolves. And with the home team. So we have a, a, an inherent advantage here. As there's the Wolves side then. Ah, Dama is fast. Anyway, we're fine. They've got Diego Costa on the bench, which you, I don't know about you folks. I forget that's happened. And it, yes, okay. All right, then here we go. The form has been all right until defeat to Villa. So let's try and turn it around now, please. And we're at least looking for signs that things are looking good. Even in that Villa game where we lost the game, there were some signs there that we could be quite, quite dangerous. We just weren't taking chances. We've got to be able to find the back of the net. All right, we're starting on positive again because I do feel like we're best on that, you know, working a little quicker, taking a little more risk. Although the possession in the game so far, by the way, is so Wolves's that I guess our sort of counter-attacking playing direct style, slightly slower, might actually play into our hands a little bit, even though they've got an immense amount of the ball. As uh, the, yeah, the, the highlights of this first half have been, well, riveting. That's half time. Blimey. These videos have got to be eight minutes. What's, <laughs> slow down. It's already been eight minutes, hasn't it? Yeah, okay. All right, Team Talk's gone well at half time. They, uh, they, they, they went mm, like that. So I assume that's good. They reversed the remote control car by the sounds of things. I don't, I don't know what happened. Uh, here's Wolves then. First highlight of the game. So we might as well watch it. It couldn't possibly be a goal for them, could it? Nick Pope flails at it like he's putting his hand up to answer a question. All right, can we try and wrestle a bit of this possession back? Play slightly smarter? You know, maybe not, but equally not necessarily play out of the defense. Get the ball forwards a little quicker, please. Again, it seems crazy to go away from positive, but a little bit more risk averse. Can we make something happen? And we've got the ball. I mean, 67 minutes in and we've got the ball. Kieran Trippier, down to St. Maximin then. Again, can we work something in behind for Isaac? His pace is should and could be a real danger as could Dan Jumas, as he's out on that side. Can he get the ball back across? Oh, he takes on his man. Brilliantly, there's McAllister. That's why he's in the role. That's why he's in the goals. It's Newcastle 1. It's Wolves nil, And that is exactly what we were looking for. A big direct ball out to the left-hand side, working those wing positions. Brilliant work by Dan Jumas, by the way. This is really, really good. And the two new signings that we made last episode are showcasing just why we bought them. A great pick out and a lovely finish and a horrendous goalkeeping that I'm going to ignore because it ruins the narrative of these two doing well come on oh god i can relax now i feel i feel at ease you know what you're you're not getting in charge why would we put you in charge the wing game. quarter ball pope clears it brilliant stuff from him and why well, I mean, that was close <laughs> yeah it was close <laughs> Ooh. all right 15 minutes to go and um, we've looked pretty good some changes though joel linton off maybe thomas lamar on at this stage isaac out for chris woods what am i doing sure in fact chris wood let's 
target man support yeah and actually with the way in which we see runs from our wide players he might actually be pretty good in that role so <laughs> let's see how it goes but what's important now then is to slow things down even more if we can to waste as much time as possible in the very few late moments that we have in this game and maybe if possible to make one final change i'll mirror on, on for uh for St. maximin in the support inside forward role drop the attacking roles from all these central midfielders too and let's just get this game one now time ticking away oh good yeah make loads of changes better then force an injury trippy is out when clear in i mean no drama please as the time ticks away i'm a managerial genius he said as there was more added time than anticipated there we go then one nil a very very even game and lovely to see the new two's players uh, getting involved and getting on the score sheet and now what we're doing is building my reputation which is the most important thing in Gloriata. <laughs> grant's turned up the match today looked like it could have gone either way but it's fair to say you were relatively confident that you'd win and i'm going to say i honestly never believed for a nanosecond that we weren't going to win a nanosecond what are social media saying about that hey eh? hey eh? that's what you pay our money for pure entertainment says manager i mean it's a one nil but sure all right trippy is out for a couple of days so he'll be back relatively soon and we will be back for the games against west ham and arsenal uh maybe even the carabao cup thrown in there as well who knows and again ten thousand likes not only will we be back with the the voice of the corner but um yes you but uh yeah it'll be this weekend as well if not i will see you on monday take care everybody see you soon goodbye and before we go, just because I feel like it's worth mentioning, I'll be live on Twitch tonight from 8 o'clock with the Adventures of Jack Space. If you want to follow the journey along, there's 20 episodes to binge watch. Link in the description to Jack Space. It's Grand Theft Auto. It's me as someone in Grand... It... Just watch it. I will stop talking about it when you're all watching it.